Number 1. Frank Lucas. Born in 1930, in La Grange, North Carolina, Frank Lucas moved to Harlem in 1946. He aspired to be what he termed Donald Trump rich and so he calculated a plan after seeing the potential of the heroin business that was largely fed by the Vietnam War at that time. U.S. servicemen were exposed to all sorts of drugs overseas and many came back with raging addictions. Lucas knew the potential for a huge profit was there if he could obtain the heroin from the source and bypass the Italian mafia that was in control of Harlem at the time. After traveling to Vietnam and setting up contacts and connections there, he was able to ship in tons of heroin from Southeast Asia on a regular basis. He hired only family members and trusted friends and eventually he took control of the heroin trade in New York and New Jersey. Working with Kansa, a well-known opium lord, Lucas arranged to have the heroin hidden in coffins that were flown from Vietnam to the U.S. During the height of his operation he was making approximately a million dollars a day and his net worth was estimated to have been in the neighborhood of $52 million making him number 10 on our list of most successful gangsters. Ironically, after serving time, Lucas was said to be sorry for his part in the devastation of Harlem and for the damage he caused so many individuals and families. He spent time attempting to undo some of the damage by working with his daughter's nonprofit organization, Yellow Brick Roads, protecting children of incarcerated parents. In 2007, his life was depicted in the movie American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington. Number 2. Jose Figueroa Agosto Jose Figueroa Agosto was born June 28, 1964 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. He is said to have risen in power within his crime family after he killed a driver that had stolen a shipment of cocaine. Even though he was caught and convicted for the murder he managed to escape, walking out of the prison with a fake release order and fleeing to the Dominican Republic. He made his millions in drug trafficking at some point controlling over 90% of the drug traffic from the Dominican Republic to Puerto Rico. He successfully eluded the law by creating alternate identities and paying bribes to law enforcement personnel but his luck finally ran out. He was arrested in July of 2010 by DEA, FBI, U.S. Marshals, and the Puerto Rican police. His fortune was estimated at approximately $100 million making him number 9 on our list. Number 3. Griselda Blanco Griselda Blanco, also known as the The Godmother and the Black Widow, was born in Colombia on February 15, 1943. She is suspected of having committed over 200 murders while transporting cocaine from Colombia to the U.S. She was raised by an abusive mother and drifted into prostitution at a young age. Working as a prostitute she became involved with the Medellin cartel. Working for them, she helped smuggle Colombian cocaine throughout the U.S., even designing special undergarments that could be used to transport large amounts through U.S. Customs. Blanco arrived in New York in the mid-1970s, a successful drug smuggler running a huge narcotics operation but U.S. law enforcement was on her tail and after intercepting one of her shipments she and more than 30 of her partners were indicted. Afraid she would be captured, Blanco returned to Colombia but eventually she came back to the U.S. and this time settled in Miami. She continued working for the Medellin cartel, acquiring her reputation for murder until she was eventually caught and jailed for drug conspiracy. Upon her release Blanco returned to Colombia where she was gunned down by two hit men on motorcycles at age 69. In her time she was making approximately $80 million a month and during her peak she was worth $2 billion. That makes this dangerous lady gangster number 5 on our list. Number 4. Amado Carrillo Fuentes 
Amado Carrillo Fuentes was born December of 1956 in Nivalato, Sinaloa, Mexico. He was known as the Lord of the Skies, earning his nickname utilizing private planes to carry cocaine around the world. He owned a fleet of 27 private jets, most were Boeing 727s. Flying into mostly municipal airports and airstrips around Mexico, he was able to successfully transport massive amounts of cocaine. Fuentes murdered his former boss, Rafael Aguilar Guayardo, leader of the Juarez drug cartel and took over operations. Under his direction, the cartel flourished and Fuentes became one of the most powerful drug traffickers in the world shipping tons of cocaine directly to Manhattan monthly. Married with a family, Fuentes resided in a Middle Eastern-style home that resembled a fortress called the Palace of a Thousand and One Nights. It was finally ordered to be torn down in 2006 by Governor Edward Obers. Fuentes lived a far from peaceful existence spending the last ten years of his life mostly on the run from the law. In 1997, as capture became imminent Fuentes decided to change his appearance and after admittance into a hospital in Mexico City, he died on July 3, 1997, while undergoing extensive plastic surgery. The operation lasted over nine hours and it's unclear as to whether Fuentes had a reaction to a medication or the respirator failed but he died on the table. Strangely enough. Three months afterward, the two doctors who had performed the surgery were found dead, buried in concrete tombs. There was evidence torture had taken place. The funeral of Fuentes was considered to be one of the most expensive in all Mexico's history with thousands in attendance. This gangster, in his prime, was reported to have a net worth of over $25 billion making him number two on our list. Number 5. Pablo Escobar Number 1 on our list is Pablo Escobar, born December 1, 1949 in Antioquia, Colombia. He was a founding member of the Medellin Cartel, one of the most powerful drug cartels in all of Colombian history. His ruthless ambition gained him control of over 80% of the cocaine that was smuggled into the U.S. Born into a poor family Escobar started his criminal career early, stealing and selling tombstones. By the 1970s he began to be involved with cocaine. In partnership with five other illegal business owners he formed the Medellin Cartel purchasing large amounts of coca paste from Bolivia and Peru and importing it to the U.S. According to Fortune and Forbes magazines he came in as number 7 on their list of the 10 richest people on earth. He crafted his position and status carefully sponsoring charity projects and soccer clubs and investing in the right contacts and influential friends. Unfortunately, his ambition brought an early death to many that threatened to get in his way including at least three Colombian presidential candidates, thousands of law enforcement personnel, attorney generals, judges and even journalists brave enough to report the truth. At one point it was said he offered to pay off Colombia's national debt estimated at $10 billion. He attempted to lobby for a no-extradition clause and generous amnesty to drug lords if they agreed to give up drug trafficking. This makes sense as by this point he had distanced himself from the trade instead choosing to impose a so-called tax on those trafficking directly. His fortune was estimated to be over $30 billion earning him the number one spot on our list. He attempted to hide himself in prison to escape assassins but that only lasted a year then he was on the run again. He was finally shot to death by the Colombian police in 1993.